Hi, today we're going to be talking about how to change out an actuator diaphragm in the Ranger QCT. The model we have here is the 48 actuator. All the steps will be the same in the 148 larger actuator. It will be easiest to do this with a hand wheel assembly so that we can very easily depress the piston and lock it in place. If your Ranger actuator does not have a hand wheel assembly, contact sales at Cashco and we can definitely get you one. Items that will be needed for this is a new actuator diaphragm, a status seal washer, tools will be two open-ended wrenches depending on the size of actuator you have, a crescent wrench, and a soft smooth blunt tip tool. Materials will be lubricant for the diaphragm itself, an RTV sealant, and Loctite 271. To start we're going to unlock the lever of the handwheel assembly and we will screw the handwheel assembly in. Now that your handwheel assembly is threaded all the way in, your linkage should be loose. What you want to do now is go in and run up your jam nut against the stop washer. And what that's going to do is it's going to lock the actuator piston in place. And I'll discuss more why that's important later. Okay. The hand wheel is moving freely, so we know the piston is locked down. So now we can start disassembling the actuator. To disassemble the actuator, we're going to start by removing all the bolts. And we are going to remove the extension nuts last. Now that we got the upper actuator case off, we're going to remove the center bolt. And once the center bolt is removed, the diaphragm and all the component parts will come off with it. The center bolt will be difficult to get off. Um, we use red Loctite when we lock it in place. So it's definitely good to have a second set of hands to hold the piston in place while you're turning. So now we can discard our used diaphragm and we are ready for reassembly. Now take your new diaphragm and when it's received it will be in a cup shape. We're going to put that on the actuator cup side up and install our parts. We're going to take our new status seal and put it around the center bolt. We're going to take our washer with some RTV sealant. and just put a real thin coat around the inner hole. We're then going to take some Loctite 271, red Loctite, install just a little bit on the threads, and we'll thread that in. Now that that's tight, we're going to fold the diaphragm down over the piston and we want to put the bead on the diaphragm in the groove on the lower case. We'll then grab our blunt tipped object and we'll start to tuck the diaphragm down into the lower case. This is where having a hand wheel assembly comes in very handy because we can depress that piston and lock it in place so that we can then push the diaphragm down into the lower case, getting that diaphragm bead set into the groove of the lower case. It might take multiple passes to get it all the way down, but once it's tucked in, it should all be even all the way around. From this point, our new diaphragm is installed we're going to take some Molly Coat powder. This is a lubricant that we use. So Molly Coat powder or equivalent. And we're going to 
spread that around the diaphragm. This diaphragm does roll on itself, so lubricating it is required. Now that the lubricant's on the diaphragm, the diaphragm's installed, we're gonna reassemble the actuator. We're gonna reassemble the actuator in the orientation that it came off. If you need to make a match mark on here before you start, go ahead and do that. We're gonna start with our extension nuts. And when reassembling the extension nuts, make sure they are evenly placed or evenly separated so that if you do have to disassemble this due to a, a failed linkage, it's coming off evenly. The upper case is coming off evenly. Once the extension nuts are secure, we'll continue to install the standard bolts. Now with our upper actuator case reassembled, we can turn our hand wheel down to depress the piston just enough to disengage that linkage. And we will back off our jam nuts from the stop washer to their original position. Once the jam nuts are in their original position, disengage the hand wheel all the way. Once the hand wheel is all the way removed, re-engage your locking lever to seal the actuator. Once your locking lever is tight in place, that's it. That concludes the change out of the Ranger actuator diaphragm. If you have any questions regarding this, please reach out to your Cashco sales representative and they'll be able to get you in contact with Cashco service or Cashco sales.